Hello, I'm Kaylee Fretland from the Red Lake Indian Health Service Hospital. I would like to talk to you about opioid overdoses. Opioid overdose is a major public health problem in the United States. It has contributed to accidental deaths among people who use or misuse prescription opioids. Chapter 1, Overview, Scope of the Problem. Opioids include illegal drugs such as heroin, as well as prescription medications used to treat pain, such as morphine, codeine, methadone, oxycodone, also known as oxycontin, percodan, and percocet, hydrocodone, also known as Vicodin, Lortab, and Norco, fentanyl, also known as duragesic, hydromorphone, also known as dilaudid, and buprenorphine, also known as Subutex and Suboxone. Opioids work by binding to specific receptors in the brain, spinal cord, and gastrointestinal tract. In doing so, they minimize the body's perception of pain. However, stimulating the opioid receptors or reward centers in the brain can also trigger other systems of the body, such as those responsible for regulating mood, breathing, and blood pressure. A variety of effects can occur after a person takes opioids, ranging from pleasure to nausea, vomiting, severe allergic reactions, such as anaphylaxis, and overdose, in which breathing and heartbeat slow or even stop. Opioid overdose can occur when a patient deliberately misuses a prescription opioid or an illicit drug, such as heroin. It can also occur when a patient takes an opioid as directed but the prescriber miscalculated the opioid dose, or an error was made by the dispensing pharmacist, or the patient misunderstood the directions for use. Also at risk are individuals who misuse opioids and combine them with sedative agents, resulting in sedation and respiratory depression. Anyone who uses opioids for long-term management of chronic cancer or non-cancer pain is at risk of opioid overdoses as are persons who use heroin. Others at risk include persons who are, one, receiving rotating opioid medication regimens, and thus are at a risk for incomplete cross tolerance. Two, discharge from emergency medical care following opioid intoxication or poisoning. Three, at high risk for overdose because of a legitimate medical need for analgesia coupled with a suspected or confirmed substance use disorder or non-medical use of prescription or illicit opioids. Four, completing mandatory opioid detoxification or abstinent for a period of time and presumably with reduced opioid tolerance and high risk of relapse to opioid use. Five, recently released from incarceration and who have a history of opioid use disorder and presumably have reduced opioid tolerance and high risk of relapse to opioid use. To address the problem, law enforcement officers, emergency medical personnel, healthcare professionals, and patients are being trained on the use of the opioid antagonist naloxone hydrochloride, also known as naloxone, which is a treatment of choice to reverse a potentially fatal respiratory depression caused by opioid overdose. Naloxone has no effect on non-opioid overdoses, such as those involving cocaine, benzodiazepines, or alcohol. Today we will cover the recommended steps to reduce the number of deaths resulting from opioid overdoses. Chapter 2, Overdose Signs and Scene Safety. It is important to recognize that an opioid overdose needs immediate medical attention. An essential step is to get someone with medical expertise to see the individual as soon as possible. If there are no emergency medical services or other trained healthcare personnel on the scene, dial 911 immediately. Step one, call for help. Dial 911. All you have to say is, someone is not breathing. Be sure to give a clear address and or description of your location. Step two, check for signs of opioid overdose. Signs of overdose include 
extreme sleepiness, inability to awaken with verbal cues, or upon a sternal rub. Breathing problems, such as slow, shallow breathing to gasping, bluing of fingernails or lips, pinpoint pupils, and slow heart rate. Signs of overmedication, which may progress to overdose, include unusual sleepiness, drowsiness, or difficulty staying awake despite loud verbal stimulus or vigorous sternal rub, mental confusion, slurred speech, intoxicated behavior, slow or shallow breathing, extremely small pinpoint pupils, although normal sized pupils do not exclude opioid overdose, slow heartbeat, low blood pressure, and difficulty waking the person from sleep. Because opioids depress respiratory function and breathing, one telltale sign of a person in a critical medical state is the death rattle. If a person admits a death rattle, an exhaled breath with a very distinct labored sound coming from the throat, emergency resuscitation will be necessary immediately as such a sound almost always is a sign that the individual is near death. Step three, support the person's breathing. Remember your ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. Rescue breathing is an important first step. Be sure the person's airway is clear. Place one hand on the person's chin, tilt the head back, and pinch the nose closed. Place your mouth over the person's mouth to make a seal and give two slow breaths. The chest should rise. Follow up with one breath every five seconds. Step four. Administer naloxone. The goal is to provide the first dose of naloxone when indicated while the ambulance is en route and be ready to repeat if needed. There are several ways to administer naloxone as a first responder. Through the nose, also known as intranasal, and in the muscle, known as intramuscular. There are various reasons why one administration mechanism may be preferred over another. Please check with your local EMS director to determine the best product for your community. Naloxone will typically start to work with a person's return to spontaneous breathing occurring within three to five minutes of the dose. Naloxone will continue to work for 30 to 90 minutes, but after that time, overdose symptoms may return. Step five, monitor the person's response. All patients should be monitored for recurrence of signs and symptoms of opiotoxicity for at least four hours from the last dose of naloxone or discontinuation of the naloxone infusion. Patients who have overdoses on long-acting opioids should have more prolonged monitoring. Continue rescue breathing while waiting for the naloxone to take effect. It is essential to get the person to an emergency department or other source of medical care as quickly as possible, even if he or she revives after the initial dose of naloxone and seems to feel better. A common question that many people have is, what happens if I use naloxone and the patient is not experiencing an opioid overdose? The reality is that the person in question will likely die unless something is done. Giving the medication will not hurt someone that is unconscious for other reasons but choosing to withhold it may prevent you from saving their life. Now what happens if someone has taken products that are not opioids, such as benzodiazepines, like diazepam or lorazepam, or methamphetamines? In patients taking these substances, naloxone will not produce any effect. It is often unclear what a person's symptoms might suggest, and there's always a chance that someone has multiple substances in their system. As a result, it is better to give the naloxone than not when any kind of overdose is suspected. Hi, my name is Selena Beasley, Project Director of the Red Lake Chemical Health Programs. Important do's and don'ts in responding to opioid overdoses should be remembered. Do support the person's breathing by administering oxygen or performing rescue breathing. Do administer naloxone. Do put the person in the recovery position on their side if he or she is breathing independently. 
Do stay with the person and keep him or her warm. Don't slap or try to forcefully stimulate the person. It will only cause further injury. If you are unable to wake the person by shouting, rubbing your knuckles on the sternum, the center of the chest or rib cage, or light pinching, he or she may be unconscious. Don't put the person in a cold bath or shower. This increases the risk of falling, drowning, or going into shock. Don't inject the person with any substance such as salt water, milk, speed, or heroin. The only safe and appropriate treatment is naloxone. Don't try to make the person vomit drugs that he or she may have swallowed. Choking or inhaling vomit into the lungs can cause a fatal injury. All naloxone products have an expiration date, so it is important to check the expiration date and obtain replacement naloxone as needed. We will now review the various naloxone formulations available to first responders. Chapter 3 FDA approved intranasal naloxone device. My name is Dr. Mark Cunningham, the EMS Medical Director for Red Lake Nation. I will now review the steps associated with administering naloxone nasal spray 4 mg for the emergency reversal of opioid overdose. Step 1. Lay the person on their back. Step 2. Remove the Narcan nasal spray package from the box. Peel back the tab with the circle to open the package. Step 3. Hold the Narcan nasal spray with your thumb on the bottom of the plunger and your first and middle fingers on either side of the nozzle. Step 4. Tilt the person's head back and provide support under the neck with your hand. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until your fingers on either side of the nozzle are against the bottom of the person's nose. Step 5. Press the plunger firmly to give the dose of Narcan nasal spray. Step 6. Remove the Narcan nasal spray from the nostril after giving the dose. Step 7. Get emergency help right away. Move the person to the recovery position. Watch the person closely. Repeat steps 2 through 6 using a new Narcan nasal spray every two to three minutes until the person responds or medical help is received. Step eight, put the used Narcan nasal spray back into its box. Step nine, throw away the used Narcan nasal spray in a place that is away from children. Chapter four, Naloxone Auto Injector. We will now demonstrate use of the naloxone 0.4 milligram per 0.4 ml auto injector for opioid overdose. Please keep in mind that the device used in this demonstration is for training purposes only, but will accurately show how the auto injector works. If you are ready to use, pull off red safety guard. To inject, place black end against outer thigh, then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Injection complete. Remember that if using the auto injector on a child or very small person, you would pinch the thigh and hold while the naloxone is injected into the person's body. The needle will automatically withdraw into the unit when the injection is complete, so there is minimal risk of injury to the user. After the use of the naloxone auto injector, it can be disposed of in the trash. Additional doses may be given every five minutes, up to five additional doses while waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Chapter five, intranasal Naloxone Administration. Step one, first, inspect the naloxone two milligram per two ml Lirolock syringe for clarity. Step two, pull off the long yellow cap of the syringe. Step three, open and attach the white atomizer by screwing it slowly onto the top of the syringe. Step four, 
pop off the purple cap on the medicine vial and the yellow cap on the base of the syringe. Screw the glass vial onto the plastic syringe about three turns until you feel a slight resistance. Step five, with the patient on their back, place the spray top into the nostril of the overdosing person and push quickly on the glass vial. Pushing slowly will prevent the liquid from misting correctly. You will spray half the liquid into the person's nose, then insert the spray top into the other nostril and administer what remains in the syringe. If the person doesn't respond, do another one to two minutes of rescue breathing. Step six, repeat these steps with a second dose of naloxone if no effects are noticed within five minutes. Next, we will perform a demonstration of the atomizing device. Chapter six, monitor the person's response. Now we will discuss what to expect after giving a dose of naloxone to someone with an opiate overdose. First, place them in the recovery position. This means turning them to their left side to allow for easier breathing while the naloxone begins to work. Next, remember to check the patient frequently. Additional doses of naloxone may need to be given. Naloxone is a powerful reversal agent, so overdose victims will often experience symptoms of withdrawal and become agitated. Take the steps necessary to protect yourself and be aware that the person could slip back into a state of overdose at any time. Lastly, ensure emergency medical services has arrived to provide additional medical care. It is important that they bring the patient to the hospital for follow-up, screening, and referral to treatment. The person should be monitored for signs of opioid overdose for at least four hours from the last dose of naloxone. Patients that have overdoses on long-acting formulations of opioids may need prolonged monitoring. Chapter seven, naloxone wrap-up. Please follow established protocols within your local unit regarding naloxone use, storage, and resupply. It is important to check expiration dates of your naloxone as defined by your local policy. Naloxone should be readily available on your person or in your patrol vehicle. It is important to take into consideration the impact of temperature on the naloxone device when deciding where to store your naloxone. The medication may freeze or heat up in temperature extremes. Thank you for your attention today as we learned about opioid overdose and naloxone reversal. These simple steps can help save lives across Indian country.